This is the one and only T Quest. You are tuned into the T Quest show. Shout out to my listeners and special shout out to my new listeners. Make sure before, well, not at the end of the show, make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at T Quest GLM and also download a T Quest mobile app in your Google Play Store and your App Store for free. Hit that five star and give me a great rating because you know I love making app of the day in Google. And if you guys are a fan of my music, make sure you stream on all major platforms. It doesn't cost you anything to show that love. Today's show, I'm super excited because you know how it is when it comes to me interviewing music artists. I like the ones who really have a story to tell. The ones that can really truly engage with me in conversation and give you guys something that you want to hear. Not just in the interview, but when it comes to the music too. As a Libra, I like to keep everything balanced. Ladies and gentlemen, this young lady, well... I call her a young lady because in my mind, we all are young, vibrant, fun, exciting. When I look at her, when I see her music videos, when I hear her music, I'm just like, she's a superstar. And she's a superstar that the whole world needs to know. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Melody. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm amazing. You're what? <laughs> I'm amazing today. <laughs> OMG. You know that's actually one of my favorite words, right? Is it? It really I is. <laughs> yes, I think that you should always say, like, I'm amazing or I'm gracious or something positive to kind of that makes people like, oh, you're amazing. I'm amazing too. <laughs> I see. I knew I liked you because when I first started <laughs> saying that, people be you like you said, they'd be like, wait. What? I'm like, yeah, I don't say the basic. I don't say good, I'm fine, can't complain. I say amazing, awesome, fantastic. If I'm trying to flirt, delectable. (laughs) (laughs) That's I like that. You know what I mean? And um, they be like, oh, okay. And it throws them off. Sometimes that moment of happiness can go a long way, you know? For sure. For sure. It can turn around someone's day, too. They be like, hmm. I'd be like, it's true. You're welcome for that smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're about to have some fun. I hope you're excited. But, you know, Absolutely. let's start off with your day. Tell me how was your day and what did you do? My day was fabulous. I did a photo shoot today and a mini video shoot. So um, getting ready to get some, put some content up for... Um, all the music that I have coming out. Um, yeah, so it, it was amazing. It's a beautiful day, sun shining. It's just absolutely gorgeous down here in Atlanta. Okay, so you're in the ATL, ATL. Now, are you originally from ATL? No, um, I don't even know where I'm originally from. I'm from North Carolina <laughs> originally. Um, I lived in Pennsylvania for a while. I lived in um, Charlotte. That's that's where I say that I'm from because I went to um, middle school and high school there. Mm-hmm. A little bit of college, so that, that's where I read. But I lived a lot of different places. Okay. I tell people when it comes to... Um the place that where you're from or you grew up at, it's kind of like when it comes to people in the entertainment industry, when you become a slasher, you know, uh, I do this, I yes, do that, I'm blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a major slasher. I like to say that I'm a nomad. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it gets complicated, especially if you grew up someplace and then you move and then when you get old, you start exploring life for yourself, whether it's college, career or whatever more cities and more states come upon they be like well i'm originally from here grew up here now i reside here and in a couple of years you never know where i'm a be. exactly <laughs> i think that's my story too absolutely um so tell me about um the photo shoot you had today was it um your own ideal or was it like a stylist like i want to see you in this that a third you know some artists they don't always get to pick. They just don't see what they're going to wear until they actually get to the photo shoot. So how is the process with you today at the photo shoot? Oh, yeah. So I am so used to having, like, that type of situation where I have a stylist or a creative director. And today I just had full creative reign over my show. I styled myself. I did my makeup. I did my hair. I, um, like, basically came up with the creative content had the photographer find a location. I just basically told him what I was looking for. But I had full creative control today, and I just feel so amazing 
Because <laughs> when, but it's nothing like, you know, having a vision and then kind of see it comes to fruition. Um, so that happened for me today. So that that really does kind of put the cherry on top of the day for me. Absolutely. And the reason why I say that, because when I look at you and where you are in your career that I know of, I'm visualizing you with that team, you know, and usually when you have that team, certain situations, you don't always have too much say. You can give suggestions, but they'd be like, we know what's best for you, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. So I'm just like, hopefully you've been able to have your own vision. Because what I try to explain to people, even with me um, as a music artist, when I first started to meet people like managers and stuff, I'm like, you have to realize that you came to me because you like what you saw. So why are you trying to change me? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 100%. You know, so I'm happy when. Because you already know in the industry, a lot of people, like I said before, they don't have their own say. Even when it comes to the music, you know, is it what your label or team want? Or is it really what you truly desire for yourself? So let's talk about the EP that you're in the process of making. And tell me, what was your vision when you first started to create for it? So my vision when I <clears throat> first started um, to record the EP or just I knew that I wanted I knew the name so the name is Jaded I knew I wanted it to be um, titled that I knew I wanted to tell my story and what I had gone through for the last three years or so because um, I did take a little time off so um, I had all of this I had all of the ideas and everything conceptualized I guess mm -hmm. and. And I sat down with uh, my producer and, you know, I told him, hey, let's, let's just listen to what you have. We created the beats from scratch mm -hmm. and basically just sat down and built. And I would hear a loop or I would hear a sound. I'm like, okay, I want this sound. And then he would start constructing everything. And I had knew what I wanted to say. I just didn't know how I wanted to say it. Yeah. But just the creative process with everything coming together, like with him, you know, putting the beat together and then us sitting, the, um, excuse me, us just sitting there with that creative energy and that synergy I like to call it I love to have that type of uh, vibe when we're in the studio mm -hmm. and we're creating and everything just I mean it just came out um so I had already knew where I wanted to go I had the vision for it and just to kind of I finished with everything now so just to be a witness to watch everything come to pass how mm -hmm. I wanted it to I mean, yeah. it's, it's, an, it's amazing. It's an amazing process. And it's amazing feeling. You know, as an artist, once you complete something, it's like, okay, I did it. It's my baby. Absolutely. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm very curious, why did you name it Jaded? Um, just like Jaded is basically, it's just how I'm doing it. You know, um, basically the definition of Jaded is, you know, tired or unenthusiastic, just basically after having had too much of something. So I feel like what I went through and then me telling my story over the past couple of years, I've had too much of the same thing. So now I just don't have any emotion towards it. I'm not excited. I'm not, I'm just like blah about it. You know, it's like blah yeah. day. Like I don't even care. I, I don't, I don't have anything else to say after I say this. So that's why I just basically call it jaded. Like I have everything that's been done has been done. And now I'm not angry. I'm not upset anymore. I go through all of those emotions um, through the EP. But it's like at the end, it's just like I'm, I don't even care anymore. It is what it is. And I have nothing else. No more energy to put into the situation. Wow. Wow. Now, see, that's what I love to hear because on my show, my tagline is relatable, informative, yet entertaining. You know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when you listen to music, just as a consumer, you really like to... Listen to music that you either personally connect with or does something to your energy, you know, and just hearing the whole concept behind Jaded, I was like, you know what, I get that, you know, because that's what music is all about. It's our therapy It's to express what we're going through is to express what we've been through and that's how we release, we release on the pen and pad, you know, and recently that's how I've been feeling. I've been writing a lot of stuff that I've been dealing with or going through that's been on my mind and the best thing is I was like, you know what? 
I have to put this in a song, a blog, or a poem. And sometimes after you let it out, you feel much better. You know what I'm saying? Underwater, just a little bit. So I kind of laughed what you were saying. Yeah, I was like, um, okay. if, much better. There you go. <laughs> I was like, sometimes you have to let it out and you do feel better, you know? But <clears throat> as um, a therapist, I'm like, yes, write it out, release it, but truly let it go if you're going to let it go. Mm-hmm. You know, you owe it to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I like to, that, that was my mindset with this. It was, it was therapy for me, writing the songs, creating it, letting it out, telling my story. It was definitely like sitting in a, uh, in a chair, talking to a therapist, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like with, with that in mind, it really allowed me to bring a lot of my emotion towards everything, you know, through this project. So mm-hmm. it's an amazing feeling. Okay. So let's talk about the first single on the project. <laughs> blah okay, blah, right? Okay. Yes, yes. Well, blah blah is blah blah is independent. It's an independent single, so it won't be actually on the EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just released independently, so it won't be on the EP. But it sets the precedence for what's to come. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about it because I personally heard it, but I'm not sure if my listeners have. So tell them the concept behind it. A black lives basically just like <laughs> your ladies. I'm talking to the ladies essentially. You know, we've all been there where, you know, you've been in a relationship and, you know, you have a man and he keeps telling you, oh, baby, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to change. And then he never does. <laughs> so it just gets to a point where it's like, you know what? Everything that's coming out of your mouth right now is just like blah, blah. Like, I can't take you serious. I can't take your words serious. So, like, it's just like blah blah to me and it's just it's almost a sense of being jaded too like okay now I'm jaded to all the BS and everything that you've said Mm -hmm. up until this point I've seen you I've seen your actions I see your true colors so now it's just like nothing you can tell me is going to make any sense because I already know what it is Mm. the same story so that's basically the what's behind blah blah (laughs) <laughs> I swear like you coming out with this project and what you're writing about is so important in this moment you know because I keep like even you know when you're trying to get things together a lot of things from your past I was trying to come back around and I'm like no go away like look you've tried it okay it's not gonna work I'm at that point I don't believe nothing you say even if you're telling me you're going to change it's blah blah to me right now you know, and there's so many people that's going through that. And the funny part is, it's not really just um, females anymore. Sometimes men are going through that, too. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty sure a lot of guys can relate as well, you know. And yeah, I'm just like, this is funny. I feel like I need to send this song to some of the guys. Like, you trying to tell me something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> And hopefully you understand it, you know? And it's like, they're like, oh, you're trying to be funny? I said, I don't think I am. But if that's how you take it, then that's how you take it, you know? But definitely, all you listeners, make sure you go and um, stream that on all platforms. And let's talk about the music video. Yes, okay. Did you have fun on set when you did that? It looks like you did. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> let me tell you about that video. I did have a lot of fun. Um, however, I was shooting under extreme conditions. We were in um, New York, mm-hmm. um, Brooklyn. It was, I think, 25 degrees Ooh. that day. And you know in the video, I mean, it was sunny, but it was 25 <laughs> degrees. And you see I have on shorts and, yes. a, and like a crop top. Mm-hmm. I was freezing. <laughs> but you, you can't tell that I was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it was definitely um, interesting. It was definitely fun. Um, just it was just like you know what this is the type of stuff that happens behind the scenes that people don't know that we actually go through as artists. Absolutely. And it's like you know I fought for that. I was like I want to wear a fur coat. They're like it's going to be summertime. And I'm like it's not summer right now. <laughs> it's like still winter. Let me wear a fur coat. Mm-hmm. So. I wasn't able to do exactly what I wanted to do with that, but um, I feel like it came out great. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a great intro. Um, you know, I think so. It was good. No, it definitely was. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's kind of like in the modeling world, right? Even when artists and stuff 
or entrepreneurs when it comes to promo and promoting when you have to do photo shoots sometimes you have to be out there and below zero degrees just to get that perfect shot you know mm -hmm. it's it's a struggle and it may hurt a little bit in the process but in the end it's going to be something beautiful hopefully that's like in life you know you go through a lot of things you just hope at the end it comes out right also just like with a lot of the um behind the scenes or the reality shows when they do like musicals like make it a band and stuff some people are looking at it as entertainment but as someone in the field i'm like no i need you to pay attention to what's going on because this is what the business is like you do have executives that be acting a fool that make you do god knows what and you can't talk back half the time you can't have an opinion you guys are looking at the wrong stuff, kid. It ain't easy. Losing sleep, not eating, stressed out, making deadlines. Like, y'all see the entertaining side, but behind the scenes, it is not easy. You know, it really isn't. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm right. curious to um, tell me some. <laughs> tell me some of the backstories, or maybe even one that most people probably don't even know about. You know, we go on stage, we rock out, but tell me like one of the behind the stories you were like, oh my gosh, why is this happening? <laughs> oh gosh, I have so many of them. <laughs> I think, I think as artists, we always go through that. I have never like experienced just a perfect scenario when it comes to, um, you know, even shows. Like it's, yeah. it's always something behind, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, one one instance, I would say, I was doing a show with um, Jacquees in, in Greensboro. Yeah. And so I was supposed to be opening up for him. And, you know, oh, God, everything was just completely unorganized. We got there. And it's like, okay, we're DJs on playing, and I'm still waiting for set time. Nobody had the set time. I said, okay, so I'm just basically sitting around. Next thing I know, Jacquees came. And so they're like, he has to perform now. Um yeah, so we're not we're not waiting for anything. So essentially, he got on the stage and he did his thing, and then they left. I was supposed to open up for him. So when he left, everybody started leaving the venue, and it's like what? And so they were like, "Well, yes." So they were like, "Well, you're not going to be able to perform." I said, "No." I said, "No, I did not do all of this for that." So I went. I gave my um USB to the DJ, here's <laughs> my track, put my music on, and I started performing. Oh. And people started, I mean, everybody didn't come back in, but people started coming back in. But that just goes to show, like, it's it's so crazy sometimes. And, like, you have to make sure that things are, like, super organized or people have, like, some type of structure in place. Because you show up to these places and people are looking at you like, what are you supposed to be doing? What time are you going on? And it's like, what? Wait a minute. Didn't you guys do this stuff? So. Oh, my gosh. You know yeah, what? Crazy. I actually commend you for that, you know, because um Thank you. I love talking to people that I can really relate to. <laughs> Tell people <laughs> it's not just about the music, like truly relating to someone is a beautiful thing. Because I remember at an sure. award show, one of the girls, she didn't perform because she felt like the mics and stuff and the sound system wasn't up to par, you know. So she's like, Well, clearly there's something wrong with the system so me and my dancers are not going to perform you know so sorry and then she left i'm just like wow you know because the rest of us we still perform for the award show you know right. and even if it wasn't up to par a lot of people in this building still don't even know who you are right. and i feel like if she was a true professional she could have just did something a cappella, you know but don't just go on the mic and say that and leave because that's unprofessional. Because I had to do the same thing in Miami on a yacht. The people didn't even have my music. I said, I didn't come all this way for nothing. I said, I don't, you know what? Don't you worry about it. Um, give me the mic, please. <laughs> and I tell them who I was, where I was from. They can't get the music right. So I'm just going to drop something a cappella. And then I went on and networking. That separates oh. regulars from professionals. You know, I agree 100%. And I that's why agree. you are going to go far, you know. Thank you. And the one thing I do love about you, because I like to keep it real on the T-Quest show, it's obvious mm -hmm. that you are a beautiful woman, right? Thank you. Everybody knows beauty, I'll say beauty sells, 
right? We mm -hmm. live in a society, it's all about visual, what you look like, yep. how you move. But with mm -hmm. you, they can't help but to respect it because you actually have a natural gift and talent. You know what I'm saying? Not just no disrespect, not just like a stripper, dancer, model who just all of a sudden want to rap and sing because she can hold a decent note and somebody can write her bars. No, 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 no. You <laughs> have a natural gift and you didn't start doing music because someone said you could. You actually had genuine love for you and you can actually back it up with your music. Yep. You know, so that alone is such a beautiful thing, you know. So um, let's have some more fun. <laughs> now, when it comes to you doing your shows and you're promoting and everything, you ever had a moment when they see you and they just thought you was another pretty face and then was blown away by your voice? Mm-hmm. I've had that happen a lot. It, just touching on what you just basically said and not to take anything away from anybody but there are a lot of people who are trying to you know they're like oh well I'm popular and I can let me go ahead and wrap a bar or you know sing or do something when it's not the first passion like <clears throat> for me I've been doing this I've been singing since I was four mm -hmm. so I take this serious like and I tell everybody I'll tell somebody in a hot second like this is life or death for me like I I've tried different stuff um different things and went into different business ventures and yeah. nothing hits for me like music does so it's just like I know this is what I was born for I know this is what I was called to do mm -hmm. so it's my level of passion and my grind and my work ethic is like I just feel like for me it's unmatchable and I don't measure that based on anyone else. I just measure it based on me Absolutely. and my dad. So Absolutely. so yes, people would be surprised because they don't know my backstory when they meet me. They mm -hmm. just think, Oh, you're pretty okay, but can you really sing? I get I'll get that question. So <laughs> can you really sing? What's the note? <laughs> Let me hear something. You know, I get it all the time and I'm like, I don't have any problem singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this is what I do. So mm, no problem at all. But yes, that, that happens all the time, especially yeah. when I meet new people. Like, it's, it's just a constant thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like you have to prove yourself. Like, oh, well, are you really great? Prove it. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's like if I was out here lying and this was a facade, then maybe I would be intimidated by that. But that doesn't intimidate me. It actually excites me. Exactly. Because back in the day, when you tell somebody what you did, they were like, okay, let me hear something. And they used to say it because they was like excited about meeting someone mm -hmm. that can sing or rap. Now there's so many frauds out there like, yeah, all right, let me hear. <laughs> <laughs> we Are don't you believe sure? you. <laughs> we hear this stuff all the time. Now you really got to show and prove. And you're like, okay, like this ain't no biggie. I'm not a fraud, you know, and my thing is, it's not like you said, not to take away from the ones who do start that way, but I have to be honest, I just have even more respect for the ones who genuinely started with a love and passion for this, you know, like yourself, because that just, it just resonates closer to my heart. You know, and then it's kind of weird because as a, a tastemaker in the industry, you know how it is. I have to interview people and then I have to do music reviews and tell the people my opinion on the song. And sometimes they don't receive it properly, you know, and I'm just like, you can't get upset with me. If it's a female rapper or singer and if they don't like my um, my opinion or my, my review, you know, they might take it as, oh, she just hating on me. Dang, chicks never can support one. And then, like, you always go there first. But what you should do is, like, why would she say that? So what I genuinely like to do is to break down to why I feel the way I do when it comes to your song. You're coming to me for a reason. If you're coming to me to be a yes girl, then I am not the one. Why? Because how can I truly help and give an honest opinion if you're not going to receive it well? Right. You know, so like yeah. with you, it's just refreshing. Like you dope, you got the talent, you got the personality. Like we can just do this easy breezy, call it a day. You know? <laughs> Thank you. But I know I for a fact you. it wasn't always like this. So I no. need you to tell me one of those, I call it the silent cry behind the grind moment. You know. Well, you know as an and you know as an <laughs> artist, there is so many silent cries behind the grind. Absolutely. Um I've been doing this for um a long time and 
I, there have been times where, like, I like to say that I'm in a ring, like, I'm just, like, in a ring, and I'm fighting with the feet, and it's like, you try to stay up, and you try to stay on your toes, but those, there are times where you're going to get knocked down, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get back up, um, so I've had moments where things didn't play out, the way, you know, I wanted them to play out, I was signed, and, you know, I got stuck in a contract because things didn't work out with the company, mm -hmm. so it's been so many different instances where, you know, I, I've cried and I've been through it and it's not easy. Yeah. And I would definitely tell anybody, like, if you're trying to do this and you don't really have the passion behind it, um, don't do it because mm -hmm. it's not easy. It's not going to happen overnight. And I know the Internet will fool people into thinking that it does, but it does not. Yeah. And for me to be elevate and, you know, become who I am today, that took a lot of years of growing and building. I mean, I remember a time where I was so nervous to get on the stage that I think I performed and I cracked the whole time. And it was just oh, like, no. but you have, yeah, but you have to go through and I, I'm, I'm grateful for it because you have to go through those moments because that's what essentially builds you into who you're supposed to become. Yeah. Because if I was afraid all of my life, then I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't let the fear stop me or hinder who I knew I was supposed to be. I just had to overcome it and, you know, get comfortable. And once, you know, I got comfortable with everything, you know, things started become, to become more natural for me. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been so many ups and downs, and I would say it's been more downs, but when you have those ups, it makes you appreciate them that much more mm -hmm. because you know, like, hey, I deserve this moment. And, and I think I stop in every moment that I'm in, and it's just like, even if it's the smallest thing, like, um, you know, us meeting and, you know, getting the fleet BJs behind me. It's just yeah. like, wow, that even in itself, that, that's so big to me. And mm -hmm. I take those moments and it's like I remember people and I remember, you know, who was there for me when. Yeah. And I think that's important, too, especially as you elevate and go on. you got to remember who was there for you when you were just starting and nobody believed in you, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm glad you said that because... um I try to look at things from multiple perspectives, you know. I interview indie artists, mainstream artists, you know, it's always going up and down depending on who it is. And when I hear the music, I base it off of the song itself, not who it is, because I feel like a lot of people, um, they misjudge the song, you know. If it's a celebrity or someone they already know, most likely they're going to tell you that they like the song. You know, and I'm like, that's not authentic, you know. And then if it's like a an artist that's popular but may not be A-listing, just because they know of them, most likely they're going to tell you that they like the song. Or if they're right. one of the pretty girls, just to be on their good side, most likely they're going to tell them they like the song. I'm like, I, I can't do that. And it puts me in an uncomfortable position. Yes, the whole goal is to be open and honest to tell them how you feel. But then the, all the goal is to see how you can do business with them after. Because this is a business right. that you should build strong relationships, longevity, you know, Agreed. and it's not realistic to do that with everyone, but you know, certain ones like, you know, I remember when I was coming up, you was there. I remember when my song dropped, I remember you spinning it. I remember that interview, mm -hmm. certain things you just yeah. won't forget, you know? So even when I, um, like I'm telling you, I listened to the song before I even checked out anything else. I didn't look on no Instagram. I didn't do nothing. I went straight from the email. I was impressed by how professional the email was sent. You know, first Thank impressions you. is everything. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to tell you, someone that would just, yo, hear the song. It ain't even tagged properly, you know, or they'd be like, here you go. I'm just like, what is this? You know, I'm like, oh, my God. I said, as soon as I opened it, I was like, oh, great, a professional. Look at the email. Great. I said, okay, she's pretty great. Now, please tell me the song will be great. As soon as I put it on, I said, thank God, because I already knew, <laughs> you know, because a lot of my, I can't find a lot of the ones recently, I didn't have a positive opinion, but I said it in a way that I was respectful for them to receive it well. Okay. You know, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Also, <laughs> even when it comes to you, there's always the business side, right? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I know she may know a lot of people, and it's only going to get more crazy. But as T Quest, I can't get lost in the shuffle, you know? Right. So I'm just like, we'll see. <laughs> you know, she got thousands of followers, but I always tell people, take advantage of your platform and of the moment. I'm like, mm -hmm. look, you're incredible, you're amazing. 
I'm a fan, but I, I respect you as it. a... I appreciate you so much. <laughs> it's so refreshing, too, and it's so refreshing to get that support from the females in the, in mm-hmm. the industry, because I feel like when we support each other, we know what's authentic and we know what's genuine. So, and I'm not going to say with guys it's not the same, because it's very much, um, you know, is the case for most people, for most of them. But sometimes it's like when you are, you know, attractive and you have this and that going for you, you don't know. It's like, are you like, are you really listening to me? Are you really critiquing my music or are you just looking at how I look and aesthetically Mm -hmm. saying, oh, this is great. So when you hear it from a female, I feel like, oh, wow. So then that means like when when my sister tells me, then that means it's good. So Mm -hmm. it's so refreshing to have, you know, you guys' voices out there because especially for female artists, because it's not a lot. We are not dominant in this industry, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. when it comes to DJs and stuff. So <clears throat> when I get that feedback, you know, from the females, it's like, okay, all right, I'm onto something because I know if my girls rock with me, then we good. Exactly, exactly. And I remember one time it was like, Quest, you like a lot of music, but I noticed sometimes when you mention some artists, you mention that many females. And I'm like, and I thought about, I'm like, am I a hater? I said, no, I'm all about love. <laughs> and then when I really sat there, I'm like, you know what, they're right, I don't mention that many. And you know why? Because it was a time where I'm like, <laughs> some of these artists out here, I just don't like what they're doing, you know? But if you can bring me a song that I can rock with, like, I'm a fan hard body. I was the type that the tape would pop, CD was scratch, because <laughs> I don't listen to it a thousand times. I love music, you know what I mean? I love every genre. Yeah. So if I say I don't like it, yo. Know, it ain't hate. I just don't like it. <laughs> Listen, I, I completely agree. <laughs> It'd be like that. Yep. And then It'd also, like everyone is not your fan, and it is okay. Yeah. You know, true. we're individuals. We're all not going to like the same thing. You right. know, but um, we have to stick together. We was, we was programmed to look at each other as competition. So we got to mm-hmm. break that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. When the girl come in, like, look at her, she that. thinks she cute. No, she don't think she cute. She is cute. We looking at the she same girl. Cute. What you mean? <laughs> you, think, you think she's cute. Listen, that's just, I can't say that. You think, no, you think that. I can't say that. That's, that's what you think. <laughs> And, I'm just like, and then, as soon as you say that, what, you like girls? I said, oh, so now I'm a lesbian for giving her a compliment? I was like, you just can't win out here. <laughs> like, you just not win. I said, you know what? Y'all trying to be funny? Watch this. And while the guys <laughs> are lurking at her, I'm the one going up to, hey, beautiful. How you doing? Mm-hmm. And they be like, what? Yeah. I said, exactly. <laughs> it's just so, yeah, it's so bad. You know, it's so mm-hmm. bad. But I'm like, you know what? Also, what I wanted to say as the manager of the R&B division of the Fleet DJs, it is my job to seek out the R&B music. They was like, R&B is dead. I said, no, it's not. It's not dead. Yes, there's a lot of mainstream R&B singers. Some of them is really getting it popping. Some of them is sliding by because of what they're talking about or because of where the new generation is going. But there are some who actually got pipes. <laughs> <laughs> but as the tastemakers, as fans, if you don't try to seek the gems that the light is not shining on, then that's on you. Even if you type in certain things on IG, like R&B, pipes, they got pipes, listen to those vocals. There's actually these pages that's showing these people who can really sing. Right. But some people would rather complain than to go do the work to find what you want. It's just like a relationship. Oh, there's no good yeah. men out here. Oh, there's no good women. You're like, yeah, there are. You know how many people on this earth? You still right. have to do the work. Don't wait for mainstream to give you what you're looking for. Go seek it yourself. Right. You know? Because I'm like, there's so many, so many army artists out there that can blow, that can sing, that's professional. But you still have to do your work. But most people are rather complain. I said, look, yep. y'all need y'all can complain all you want, but I'm gonna show y'all something. Watch me work. You know, either somebody gonna send them to me or I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna shed some light. Cause you saw me 2.2 seconds. I need you on the T Quest show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't never do an interview this quick before. 
you know, and then people's like, who is that? Who is she? I'm just like, just listen to the show. You'll figure it out. This is someone who can definitely can sing, and she a star. She knows she a star, you know, Thank you. and I just can't wait to see you actually um, perform. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You I'm know? excited. You know, I'm definitely excited. Um, I just, I'm ready to get back out there on the stage, and especially with the new project. Like, it's so near and dear to my heart, and it's just like, you know, when you're performing something that you really believe in, and it's a true emotional connection, heck, I might cry on the stage. I don't know. <laughs> but all I know is that when... I just, it's, it's, it's so refreshing to perform your music that you wrote with so much emotion and, you know, behind it. And I yeah. feel like those are the best projects when you know, like, okay, there's no doubt about it. She went through this. Mm -hmm. Because you can't fake emotion like that. Mm -mm. You can't. No. So, yeah. Um, I'm hyped about it. <laughs> the funny thing is, so the times I've actually cried during my set was either if I had to sing at a wedding or like an inspiration song because love in realness, like, really affects my heart. And I'm like, come on, Quest, you're a professional. Don't... And I'm looking at the couple, like, oh, my gosh, they're so in love. <laughs> Once I saw the beat started, I started tearing up. I said, I'm so sorry. And the last one, I got through the second verse, but the last hug, I just couldn't hold it in. And I'm like, that's something I have to work on. It's good to be passionate about it, but not when you all of a sudden you messing up, your vibrato's acting up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's my that that happens to me at funerals. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, like three funerals, and I just uh, uh now you can't sing at a funeral for somebody who you know. This is just like, hold on, I'm over here sniffling and snotting in the middle. Of this oh this my is not god. a <laughs> They over here giving me sound. I don't know if they crying for the person or they crying because I'm bad. I don't know. What but that's something you truly have to train for. Or train in a way that it comes after the fact or at the right time. Because yeah. if you can't finish the song, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. And that reminds me yeah. of a moment where I've witnessed an R&B singer singing a song. And it was like a, um, like a breakup song. But she was just so excited to perform. Like, she's smiling and stuff. And I'm like... <laughs> Like, you broke my heart, tear me down, like, and she up there smiling. You know what I'm saying? Like, the song is a heartbreaking, but I'm performing for my people. Ah, like, no! What are you doing? <laughs> you know? So, my thing is, are you so into the crowd, or do you really get lost in your music when you're singing it? Like, do you get lost in the lyrics, bringing you back to the moment that you wrote it when you're performing? Yeah, I, try, I definitely try to visualize, you know, the um, visualize what I'm talking about and then kind of take myself back, like teleport mm -hmm. <laughs> mentally back to the those emotions and what made me choose those words and choose to, you know, write that song. So I have to do that because if I look at if I look at the people in the crowd, mm -hmm. you know, they can throw me off. <laughs> like, yeah. You never know what somebody's doing. Somebody could be rocking with you. And, and that's another thing, too. Like, if you see somebody in the crowd that's walking with you and, you know, they grooving and they nodding their head and they moving their body, then it's like, okay, I can, I'm honing in on that energy right there. Mm -hmm. That's good energy. So I know I can look at you and I can, if I feel like I need an energy boost, I know I'm looking at this one person and they're giving that to me. Mm -hmm. And you have people like that to kind of, um, you know, help you while you're up on the stage. I, I, what did I call it? I don't even know. I can't think of the word right now, but if it comes to me, I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's all about the energy. Absolutely. It's all about the energy. So I want your opinion on this scenario, okay? Okay. I know you've been um, singing and performing for a while. You know, there's a difference from open mics, showcases, open acts, and performing in concerts, right? Mm -hmm. Then you know every show is not always going to be a sold-out show. There's going to be times there's hardly nobody there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and there's gonna be time, there's gonna be thousands of people there, whether it's at a concert or you outside on stage at a bike show and thousands of people. It always fluctuates, right? Mm -hmm. So are you the type <laughs> that just know like I'm gonna rock out whether it's two or two thousand or sometimes when it's like only a few people there, like you really don't give it your all, but you still put on a good show. No, I feel like any time I perform, whether if it's 10 people in a room or 
a thousand people in the room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give my all. I feel like they deserve that. Yeah. I feel like they deserve that because. My little one in the back. Hey, it's life. <laughs> it's reality. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel like, you know, um, you got to give people the same energy because those those 10 people in that room can be diehard loyal fans. Mm-hmm. And if you don't give them your all, that means you don't respect them enough that they came out when nobody else did. Yes. So I feel like even even more so you should, you know, kill it for those people. Because mm-hmm. out of a thousand, it's like, okay, yeah, I can come in and I can do this, but there are still those people who would show up with nobody else in the room and they would sit there and they would rock with you and they would sing with you and, and, and give you that energy. And mm-hmm. I have had that situation before. And when I tell you the energy is incredible, mm-hmm. and it, it, the people who really rock with you, they're out there and they're making it like you're in front of a thousand people. So Absolutely. It's been definitely, definitely been those times. And then it's been times where it's maybe like a thousand people and nobody knows you. And they're just looking at you. Like, scared. <laughs> I call them no shade, but I call them New Yorkers. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes, for real. That is, that is such a New York movie. And vibe. <laughs> I'll be like, I, oh, my God. I had to host this event in South Carolina. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, you know, I don't like y'all. They was like, what? I say, because y'all be so turned up. And now y'all be dead silent. Y'all corny for that. Like, y'all, you better show me that energy. I came all this way for y'all. They was like, woo! I said, now, was that so hard? Come on now, because, you know, I'm not sure if you're used to it or ever been in it, but there was times where, you know, a lot of open mics and showcases where it literally just be artists performing for artists because they really don't be having that type of support at home or, you know, they just don't take the time out to really promote the show. So I'm like, if we here performing for one another... We need to be turning up for one another. Yeah. You know, I'm like, don't be going outside, texting on the corner, Snapchat. Like, if I'm standing in front for you, you need to be standing in front for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why it, 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 I think it stems from something I talk about a lot on my show, which is proper guidance. You know, a lot of them don't have no idea to really emulate. They emulate um, one another, which is not a good thing. And a lot of them have never even thought about or been through what we used to call artist development. Mm -hmm. You know, when was the last time they literally was in front of a mirror, even if it's not with like a professional coach, but really, you know, going through their set. (laughs) Making sure they're not just only performing for their friends, but performing for the crowd. I've seen artists be in competitions and you right in front of your friends. I'm like, the, you ain't supposed to impress your friends. You supposed to impress the crowd and the judges. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know, but, you know, I said, at the end of the day, when I go to events nowadays, I let them know what I know. I drop some jewels. If they pick it up, great. If you don't, I still did my job. You know, yep. but I mean, like, it is what it is. So... Here's my thing. We live in a society where it's all about social media, right? Mm-hmm. Let's <laughs> what them DMs be looking like? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I do get some crazy DMs uh-huh. here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, honestly, like, as of lately, it hasn't been that bad. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes I feel like people are intimidated and it's like the ones who are intimidated are the ones that you might want to talk to exactly. and then the ones who you would never probably talk to are the ones who got all the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, I'm like, what in the world? I see some messages sometimes and like comments on my fan page on Facebook and mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh man, you really just sat there and typed that. <laughs> but okay. You know, I try to show love. I try to be, um, I try to respond. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't believe I should be walking around with my um, head stuck in the clouds, like, because yeah. every potential fan, like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. They took the time to, to watch me or watch a video or like a picture, mm-hmm. so I try to definitely be responsive to that, but I don't, I don't know, it's, I get some crazy stuff sometimes, but it's very few and far between. Maybe yeah. you're going to ask me that next year. Let's see, <laughs> Let's see what happened then, and I'm like, oh, girl, I got some absolutely because i know the further you get in your career it only gets worse and that's why in certain stages you try your hardest to be as humble as you can but a lot of them never think of it or try to put themselves in your shoes i'm like look 
I'm still on the come up. You know what I'm saying? I'm still have to get my name out there. Yes, I'm becoming more and more popular. So you only can imagine not just my DMs, but on every single social media site, people in my face. Then I got my team, got to work on, got to make sure I push this. So it's not me being rude after a while. Like, I just don't have the time to keep going back and forth with people. Right. You know, and like I said, it only going to get worse. And you try to be as polite as much as you can. Now I'm starting to realize since you, when you want to get more in your career, why a lot of them have like assistants that be on their social media page, why they have a private mm -hmm. one just for um, like family and stuff, because it gets crazy. Yeah. And I'm just be like, uh, and then even celebrities, when you be um, tagging them and stuff and it never say seen, like you don't check none of your deals. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I actually did one. I wrote one to Charlemagne. And I'm like, mm -hmm. the day you read this, I'm going to be right there next to you on the breakfast club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And it's, I'm trying to tell you, you got to, like, just like, what was it, Demi Lovato? And she's like, one day I'm going to sing at the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? And it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, just like Jason Momoa. He pointed to the TV said, Mommy, I want that one. And he married Lisa Burnett. You know, these stuff do happen. Man, speaking into existence. Speaking into existence. You know what I'm saying? I'm so big on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so big on that. Absolutely. So, what else puts a smile on your face besides music and family? Because that's, that's, that's too common. What else? Yes, it is so common. <laughs> <laughs> um, what puts a smile on my face? Um... I love love. I love mm -hmm. seeing people happy. I love seeing people winning. Um, when I see somebody, and I even if I don't know their whole story, but I see like I've I've seen people's posts when they was getting married, or a guy was saying something to a girl, or just like you know serenaded her, or mm -hmm. some type of romantic gesture, and I literally cried tears. Like, I'm genuinely happy for people. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much love to go around that nobody should lack it, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I see it, it's like, it's just, it's also one of those type of things, like, celebrating someone else's success. Because, you know, mm -hmm. one day you're going to have people celebrate it for you. And I think that's the, that's the thing that really gets me there. It's like, this genuinely makes me happy. I love to see people happy. I love to see people winning. It literally, like, makes me, like, gives me all the feels. Oh, <laughs> all the feels. Oh um so yeah, I, that's that's one of the biggest things I think. I just love to see people progressing and winning and happy in life, genuinely. Nah, see, like I was like last night I was talking about you to Miss stuff, right? I was like, uh, I met this well to meet, but I interview this incredible artist. She's beautiful. She's talented. Her personality is amazing. She's all about love. This that third. I said she reminds me so much of me. They're like you're so conceited i'm like no <laughs> i'm like but that's a great thing that to meet more amazing people are you serious and for you to say that you love love my whole entire brand is about love my slogan is gotta love me my corporation called gotta love me i am a love therapist like that's what i'm all about it's what makes you happy i said when i see other people happy genuinely puts a smile on my face you know, like it just, it just makes me feel so bubbly. So to hear that, I'm like, oh my God, wait till I tell him today. <laughs> yes. You know, and I'm just like, oh, she's so dope. And I, I'm, I don't want to seem too like over the top, but I genuinely mean what I say because I spoken into existence. I said, this is a year that I want to meet more amazing women you know yeah. entrepreneurs artists not just connect with people just because they say we need to connect with one another or whatever women no i really want to connect with the people that's a reflection of me they said your friends and your colleagues should be a reflection of you the people you hang out with or do business with should be a reflection of you successful people hang out with successful people you know yeah. to the point where i want to get excited when I talk to you, I want to get excited when your new song come out. Like, eh, like, like a best friend do. Eh, that's my best yeah. friend. Yes. You know how they do. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it has to be genuine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, this is like super dope. 
and I'm going to play your music. I'm going to check out some more things. And, um, you know, maybe one day we can, well, I think now will be a good time to talk about when things a little downtime, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one day we probably can work on something incredible, you know. And like I was saying to you before, I do have a production team, and a lot of them do. Um, I'm more of a lyricist, but mm -hmm. they do focus on um, R&B, so I would love to, you know, send you some things and see what you vibe with and what you rock with, and you probably can make some magic happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Because yeah, I just, um, I'm in studio. Mm -hmm. um, you just, you know, just putting up a little setup for me with the downtime because I want to make sure that I can stay creative. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so whatever you have, like you got beats, you got something, anybody want to feature, mm -hmm. like I'm all for it because I'm really about to set up shop and I'm going to go so crazy working on the second EP. Man. So, um, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be, I'm going to have to learn myself something now because I'm not, like, I know how to get in there and record, but recording myself and working the Pro Tools and all that, that's going to be a little <laughs> challenge, but I'm up for it. <laughs> no, up for trust it. me, I totally get it. Okay, here go another deja vu. I just got my own home studio stuff, too. <laughs> And I'm like, I have to start recording myself. It's certain, um, because of the program that I had, I um, did buy some classes, you know, because yes, you do have like people around if they're around that you can call or, you know, video chat with and they have YouTube and stuff. But certain ones actually have classes you can buy to really um, perfect the software. And I said right yep. now I'm going to listen. I'm going to study because I'm not going to stop what I got to do. You know, so I'm like, if people want to do some work, like, we can get it done. I know engineers that all they got to do is email the stems. They can mix and master and call it a day. The show must go on go no on. matter what. The show must go on. Yeah. Exactly. And as soon as it's time, go time. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're down to the last less than... 10 minutes of the show. I just want you to let the people know exactly where they can like follow you and connect with you at. For sure. So I am, my website is www.jamelodymusic.com. That's J E N E L O D Y. Mm -hmm. The music spelled the traditional way. All of my links and everything is on my website, but on Instagram, you can find me at Jamelody. That's J E N E L O D Y. The O is a zero on there and on Twitter. And then on Facebook music, it's Jamelody Music. Just search Jamelody Music or www.facebook.com slash Jamelody Music. YouTube is Jamelody Music as well. So I like to keep everything pretty uniform. <laughs> so if you type in Jamelody somewhere, you'll pretty much find everything. I'm on all the platforms as far as Apple Music, Spotify. So you can find me there. You'll be able to find my project there. Mm -hmm. And my body of work. Mm -hmm. Videos on YouTube. Yeah, so that's how you find me. See, I like stuff like that. You know, when social media started to pop off years ago, they was like, go ahead, also, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait, no, I have to make sure whatever I use is the same thing I can use on every site because it's easier to tell the people to find you that way. When I hear people like, yo, you can hit, find me at this, this, underscore, blah, 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 star, smiley face, wink, wink on this one. The other one, you got to turn this around, flip that around, flip it, trip it. Like no one's listening and no one's going <laughs> to catch on to that. You know, that's why I try to tell you, just go through them <laughs> and make sure you have something that's unique that no one else has. So when it comes to people trying to follow you, you make it easier for your fans if you can help it. Yep. If you I'm can all help about it. convenience. <laughs> I'm all about convenience and ease of doing things. That is me. Absolutely. And there's one thing I did notice and I was waiting to ask you, what's going on with the pictures on the IG? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have archived so many pictures. This is like a social media branding company yeah. right now, and we're basically about to um, revamp the page um, centered around my new project. So mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, I just like the photo shoot and everything I just did, you'll start to see a lot more visuals and things kind of centered around that. And I'll bring back my old posts. I just want to make sure that once, you know, yeah. we're starting to promote for the EP and everything that when people come, that's all they see. So it's just like, 
we're kind of inundating the people with <laughs> Jamelody Jada. Yeah. <laughs> Different type of visuals and, um, you know, things centered around that. So I just, I like to be super strategic when I do stuff. So that was one of the things. They're like, yeah, just let's just take some of the posts down and, and keep, you know, this, this and this up. And I'm like, oh, some of the posts I didn't want to take. I'm like, okay, I got you. I'm like, just archive it. You can bring it back later. <laughs> okay. like, I get emotionally attached to pictures, but... I mean, I'll bring them back, but the stuff that's coming, oh gosh, it's just, it's going to be so fire. Just wait yeah. till you see it. I can only imagine. Cause I'll be like, when they do that, I'm like, they just delete them or is it in the cloud? Cause I even thought about doing that before, but it has to be the right time, you know? Cause yeah. I remember before I had to keep certain things up because promoters, especially when we live in a world of society, they, um, social media they used to book me based off what they saw on social media they saw me as a party mm-hmm. host they were like well let me check your ig and they see me with the mic in my hand like yo it's time to turn up they was okay she great at what she do so let me hire her so i'm like certain things i don't want to take off you know yeah. and then i told you there's actually a science to having a great phenomenal ig page you're like what i'm like yeah there's actually a breakdown what type of pictures <laughs> and videos to put up they're like this stuff is real why because this can really help your business and your brand if you really do it the right way instead of just throwing things up there right mm-hmm. but when i tell you social media is like studying your rocket science <laughs> it's like okay does this work does this not it's so crazy when i tell you i'm like oh i don't even want to have to think about it let mm-hmm. somebody else who studies the analytics the insights all of that extra cool rock because if i have to sit there and think about it it's taking me away from you know, me doing, me creating, me creating a, another dope song or something. Like, Absolutely. I could be doing something so much better with my time Man. and trying to figure out these algorithms. <laughs> it's <laughs> a job within itself, and it's only getting worse from Facebook to Twitter to IG, TikTok. Woo! Oh, like I can't even figure TikTok out. I'm just like, okay. What am I supposed to do with this one? <laughs> oh my god! But the moment you do, just don't get addicted. Like some people, I'm like, I'm gonna have to. I told myself I gotta find a way to schedule social media <laughs> and put it in my yeah. schedule. You know, like okay, because yeah. you know when you go on social media, you look up a sign real quick, you start scrolling. Next, you know, a whole hour don't went by. <laughs> yeah, like what just? Happened? Yes, it is very time consuming. It's very time consuming. Absolutely. So um, I know a lot of them are asking me um, when it comes to other radio personalities, if they wanted to interview you, what's the best way to contact you? Oh, for sure. Um, so they can contact me via email, mm-hmm. music at gmail.com. Okay. And I know I've spelled my name a million times. No, it's <laughs> fine. J E M E M O D Y music, mm-hmm. traditionally at Gmail. They can slide in my DMs if they can't get my email. Um, yeah, I'm pre- I check my DMs. Okay. I'm not at the point where I have someone else managing, mm-hmm. like logging into my social media. So I can, I pretty much see, <laughs> I can pretty much see that. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, so email me or hit slide in the DMs, and I will be more than happy. To do an interview with you. Mm-hmm. This is the perfect time to get them all out. <laughs> oh man, this is a perfect, perfect time. <laughs> this is super perfect. Um, and I want, and I like to show love. Like I love to support people who support me too. So it's like, absolutely. okay, let's go. I'm, you I'm do, for it. You do as much. Like I told you, like when you want to do it, let's get it. We can do it tomorrow. It's up to Facts. It. Let's go. <laughs> They'd be like, well, let me check my schedule. I'm gonna put you in seven ways. No, I will talk to you yeah. tomorrow. And. <laughs> If I'm not busy doing, like, if it's not, like, super hectic, like, I, I, you know, I had a busy early part of my day, but it's like, okay, after I do this, then, you know, I'm pretty good and squared away, so I can definitely um, put you in after, and I was literally on my way home um, after the shoot when we started Mm -hmm. talking, so I probably did a million and one thing since we've been on the phone, but multitasking got his best. Sometimes you got to, but once again, I want to thank you, G Melody, for being on this show, the T-Quest show. And for all of my listeners, and this is something I'm going to school you new listeners. Every time I do um, an interview with an artist, an entrepreneur, producer, DJ, or whatever, to get their information, sometimes you may not catch it in the show, but because I kind of like you guys, all you have to do is download that TQuest mobile app in your Google Play Store, in your app store for free. And then once you click on the link, 
with their name on it. All their information is right there so you can easily follow them. Once again, this is your girl T Quest. You are tuned in the T Quest radio show. And if you like to be interviewed or need a um, music review, voiceover, feature, whatever, you know, you guys all know how to contact me at T Quest GLM. <laughs>